So, first of all, exactly what is a psychologist and what do you do as part of uh, Scandia Team GBR? Okay, that's a, that's a very good question. A lot of people ask that. Um, so, obviously, um, uh, psychology is the, the study of the mind. Um, and basically, um, my, my main role is, is working with athletes using just simple strategies that help them mentally to optimise their performance. So my main role, if I were to summarise it in a, in a nutshell, is, is around conditioning sailor minds to execute the right skills at the right time, no matter what the circumstances, under high levels of stress. Uh, my, my sport was, um, uh, was table tennis, as a lot of people within uh, the ROAA know, um, and uh, played at a relatively high standard. Um, and had pretty good ability, uh, but didn't understand why I couldn't perform in competition. Um, and eventually my career ended because I got something uh, which is called the yips. Some people call it, it's an extreme form of, of uh, choking under, under pressure basically, um, when uh, you experience a breakdown in, in your, your skill. Uh, level so you you regress from from being um, you know an expert in, in in your field in in your in your strokes to um, you losing the feeling of that movement so anyway my my um, I wanted to understand that had a profound impact upon me uh, wanted to understand why and how that had happened um, and so I, I went back to university uh, I did a degree in um, sports science, majored in sports psychology, uh, and then went on to do a, a PhD in um, sev severe performance loss in competitive sport, which linked into obviously things like the yips and, and choking and loss, loss movement syndrome. So that's kind of how I got into, um, into sports psychology. Sailors, what are they like? to work with obviously they're a very dedicated driven bunch of people as any elite athlete would be but what are, what are they like to work with um, if I were to describe them in one one, one word I would say extraordinary um, they are ex, uh, you know extraordinary individuals obviously highly talented highly driven highly committed um, so I, I find that there's a real misconception with performance psychology or sports psychology because there's always that whenever I get asked about it it's always like well how do you motivate the athletes well I don't need to motivate the athletes they are highly driven individuals and often it's about pulling back on the reins a lot of the time um, because they're, they're you know they're so committed bordering on obsessive in, in, in what they do mm. um, and uh, I think one of their great I think the way I would differentiate the sailors from other sports that I've worked in, there's a, there's a real fascination with the process and attention to detail in terms of preparation side of things. Um, so, you know, athletes really do, when they're out on the water, they, they take responsibility for their performance uh, out on the water. I think it's really important to highlight that Again, one of the, the misconceptions about performance psychology is it's, you know, it's sitting in a, in a darkened room on a, on a couch, you know, um, navel gazing, and it's something mystical, mystical and magical. It, it's none of those things. And I guess I work to a framework which works at lots of different levels throughout the organisation, one of which is on a one-to-one -one with the athlete. Um, so I, I work on areas of, of the environment, creating the right environment in training in particular, uh, and the right culture. Um, I, I, do, I work a lot through the coaches, um, creating the right training environment out on the water. Uh, it's what I call the red arrows, so working through the red arrows, they obviously have the most um, interaction with their sailors. So you know, it's really important to engage those, in, in, in those guys in the, in the process. Uh, team dynamic stuff, whether that be on a one-to-one -one team or the Olympic team as a, as a whole. 
um, and then we're getting into the one-to-one -one mental skills type thing um, and also the, the, the work that I do at competition which is very much uh, reinforcing mental skills and being a logical sounding board for the athletes. Um, so I work at a, a cross-section of, of different areas across that framework. 90% of it is proactive. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you know, identifying, um, well, for me, first off, it's, it's getting the athlete to understand how their brain works um, and creating awareness around that because everyone's slightly different and educating them in that, in that area and then looking at very simple strategies that helps them play to their strengths. It's so a very much a positive psychology approach to, to performance. Wow. So, along, so I imagine you work sort of quite closely, so you've got the, you're looking at the uh, mental strength and then how that interlinks with the, the physical strength. Do you work quite closely as a team? We do, yeah. I mean, it's, um, the, the, the sports science and medicine team are, you know, have come a long way in the last year or so. And, um, you know, I think we're now starting to work truly as a holistic kind of multidisciplinary um, approach to, to sports psychology. So uh, I think it's very easy within your discipline to work in silos and we found that that's just not effective uh, because there's so much crossover between the, the, the physical and, and the mental aspect. Mm. Um, so, so it is about working very closely with, with the rest of the team um, to make sure that um, everybody understands how that athlete works both from a physical and mental point of view and one of the things that helps us to do that is we have a, a meeting each week uh, on, a, on a Friday afternoon to go through each of the key athletes from a psych point of view, from an injury point of view, from a physiological fitness point of view to make sure everybody's on the same page and has got the right information about that athlete. Say you've got someone that's not been through the process before and they're quite... That a, hasn't a, been through the pathway. Yeah, who's an, a new athlete that's sort of come under your wing and suddenly they've got this whole raft of people yeah. that are now helping them. Yeah. Some people might step back from that and go, well, I want yeah. to work on my own on this. How do you sort of get them to engage and yeah. get them to use the skill set that's there to support them? I think it's, you know... The, the, it's a double-edged sword that because you know as you've inferred that you know we don't want to it's not about throwing as much information at that athlete and seeing what sticks it's about being strategic it's about um, doing an appropriate needs analysis um, from a physical mental technical tactical point of view you know all the different elements of, of the sport through performance profiling um, and identifying what are the priorities for that athlete. You know, what it, where are the areas where they can make some, some big gains? Um, and again, I think there's a real misconception about um, how athletes review. Mm -hmm. So it's very, uh, f for me, um, I think historically we've seen people identify what their strengths and weaknesses are and working on their weaknesses. And I think that that's not the way forward. Mm. Um, it's, it's our strengths that are gonna bring, you know, get us to, to where we need to get through in terms of winning medals. Um, so um, it, it's kind of looking at things in a slightly different way. But anyway, it's about prioritizing and identifying where can we make the biggest gains for this athlete and then putting the appropriate uh, support mechanisms and strategies in place, not vice versa. Mm. Do you find that some athletes maybe need a little bit more than others? Some will come to you more frequently for a, a sounding board, for some advice, maybe use you as a bit of an agony aunt. Do you find that there's some are more than others? Absolutely, and uh, there, you know, there are some athletes that, that um, don't engage in performance psychology and actually don't need to. You know, they're un unbelievably resilient, they're incredibly mentally tough um, and, y you know, they have the skills to deal with adversity. When their back's against the wall, they can still grind out wins. Mm. Um, the other people who are incredibly uh, psychologically minded um, is how I term it and, um, and have the capacity to take on lots of different skills that again help to, to facilitate their, their performance out on the water. 
but it, you know, it's, it, it's really important to realise that it, it's not just about working on mental skills, it, it, it's about making sure that we identify the needs of the athlete um, and play them to their strengths out on the water. So it, it's, it's encouraging the positive more than anything? Yes, um, it, 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 is, it is encouraging um, the, the, the positives, but also using, you know, there's a limited amount of time that any one athlete can, can train out on the water. And it's just making sure, as part, one of my roles is helping the coach and the athlete maximise that time on the water. Um, with, you know, using simple uh, strategies like, you know, goal setting. You know, is a, is a good example of you know, making sure that, that training is purposeful, that an athlete is going out, working on a certain aspect in training, coming back in and reviewing that aspect and gleaning um, the, the learning points from that. So, so training becomes as optimal as possible. So are these skills that, say, a, a club sailor that we might have watching today could say, oh, I, what could I go away with? What could I use in, in my day-to-day -day sailing? Is that kind of a, something they could use? Absolutely. Um, I, I think that I've worked for uh, the RWA now for over 10 years and I think one of my first observations when I, when I started working with uh, the youth squad uh, way back in 2001, I think it was, um, was, uh, you know, athletes, sailors were going out onto the water um, without a clear objective or a clear focus on what they were trying to achieve. Um, and so therefore, it's very easy to then go, start going through the motions. And when we start going through the motions and we're not focused on the right things, uh, that reinforces bad habits. Um, and, re uh, and bad habits are the, are the things that tend to come out in competition because, you know, we've, we've rehearsed them so many times, we've reinforced them, they've become automatic. So I always say to, to young sailors, um, that if you're going to go training, have a clear focus. If you haven't, you're better off sitting in the canteen drinking coffee than going out onto the water uh, and going through the motions because in, in essence you're making yourself worse. How do you keep yourself sort of mentally fit and prepared for what effectively is quite a stressful time for you as, as well? Um, I think um, I, I, I do practice what I preach mm -hmm. so um, for me the main thing is about preparation so I, it, already I've established um, what my processes are, what my roles and responsibilities are at the Olympic Games within the team what my routines are going to be that I need to follow, although semi-structured, um, that all w will enable me to, to kind of stay in control uh, and do my job and um, do it to the best of my ability. Um, as I said earlier, my, my main role will be just kind of proactive psychology, you know, being the logical sounding board which will be prepared f beforehand going into the games with certain athletes. Mm. Um, and also there'll be some reactive stuff. Uh, the other aspect is I'm, I'm very fortunate to have um, uh, two very good mentors um, that sit outside of uh, uh, GB Sailing um, that it's really helpful for me to be able to offload to them um, so that kind of emotion doesn't uh, mm. get passed on to me and, uh, and uh, you know, it, 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 I have a way of just, just kind of offloading that, that mm. stuff. So I've got those strategies in place and it's important to, to, to do that to allow me to uh, perform to my best. This isn't your first games, is it, that you've been involved in? You've no. been involved in others. Do you still get excited, a little bit apprehensive about the upcoming games? Um, or is I, it on the job? <laughs> it's strange. I, I, no, I mean, no, I, I haven't got got excited. Um, I mean, I'm incredibly proud to, to, to be involved in, um, you know, what will be a chance of a lifetime and, um, you know, to be involved in London 2012 and, and you know, within the, the most successful sailing team that we've ever seen. Um, but but I, 
you know, I am aware that I've, I've got a job to do and I, I, I kind of call it the kind of jack-in-a-box role um, in the sense that I need to kind of just blend in with, with the team um, throughout the Olympic Games, but when it's time to perform, to kind of just pop out of the box and, 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 and do my job mm -hmm. uh, and then kind of pop back in again. So it's, uh, yeah, it, um, it won't be without its challenges, but we're, we're prepared for that and, um, and uh, I'm sure that we do a great job. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's going to be more of a help or a hindrance that we are actually in the UK this time round for the Games for, for the sailors? I mean, the home advantage, you're talking about the home advantage yeah, side of things. I think yeah. it's, um, the home advantage is, is a double-edged sword um, in that, obviously, uh, as the home nation, there'll be a lot more noise, what I call kind of noise, and, mm. uh, within the, the circus that goes on around the Olympic Games. Um, but but the, I suppose the positive of that is that we are... You know, we are at home and we will have the, the crowds behind us and, and I think that that could be a very powerful thing. Mm. Um, and we've spent quite a bit of time as a, as a team um, discussing how we're going to operate um, and what our mindset needs to be uh, and managing our expectations. Um, so it, that will allow us in turn uh, or rather our sailors to, to focus on the on the processes and the task in hand because the actual sailing doesn't change mm -hmm. you know it's still just another regatta um, you still got to start you still got to tack you still got to jibe um, but it's just making sure that you're aware of um, what's noise and what's not and what's going to impact on performance and what's not, and making sure that you're focused on things that are just going to impact performance. I think we will do that incredibly well. I think the athletes that we've got um, are really experienced. The ones that are first timers have had the opportunity to learn from the experienced sailors. Um, and um, yeah, I'm very confident that we'll, uh, we'll do a good job. There's a lot of stress, as we've just talked mm. about, and noise that goes on around an Olympic Games mm. um, and I think it's really easy for athletes and support staff and coaches to fall down the hole of we've got to do more because it's the Olympic Games mm -hmm. and of course that's not helpful because we need to be um, you know playing to our strengths as we talked about earlier sticking to processes and routines um, rather than trying to do that little bit extra mm -hmm. and what we see sometimes in athletes that try and do that they end up kind of falling falling by the wayside because they've they've tried to do something different so i guess my my, my philosophy and, and and my main role at, at, at the at the olympic games 2012 will be um to i, I guess i highlight in, in in three words it's about we know that there's going to be challenges. We know there's going to be noise and curveballs thrown in. It's about de-escalating the problem. Any problem that's thrown in, de-escalate. It's about normalising. This is how the game's played. That's the territory we choose to put ourselves in, and that's the Olympic Games. And then to simplify, to keep things very, very simple, because our brains work v better when we keep things simple uh, in terms of the problem-solving side of things. And I think it's very easy for, again, athletes, coaches and support staff to fall down that hole of, um, you know, escalating, catastrophizing and overcomplicating things when actually that's not, not, necess not necessary. Mm.